There we go, there we go. The room's getting packed. We got 240 people in here and counting and a million yeses. How's everyone doing? Massive echo. Let me try to... Okay, how about now? Is the audio okay? Good, good, good. Good. So, how many of you guys traded the NFT? Let's start with that. Okay, I have no idea what the NFP is. Okay. Okay. So, all right, before we get started, I want to get to know all of you guys. How many of you guys been here for the first time? Never been to my live webinar before. Okay, very new, first time here. Okay. Boom, boom. Okay, so quite a, quite a bit of you, quite a bit of you. Okay, and how many of you guys have been here before? So you can say second time or more than once. Okay, three, ten, second, many times, more than three, ten, five times. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. All right, all right. So. So again, for those of you who are new, my name is Naveen Prithiani. I am the senior trader at ForexWatchers.com and your mentor and educator at UrbanForex.com. Uh, and we are going to be discussing the NFP today. Um, so let's get, let's get the party started. Is the screen visible for everyone? Yeah? Okay, let's get into it. Okay, how many of you guys are MPA members? you know, students of my Mastering Price Action course. Okay, I got an announcement for you guys. Um, given in a week's time or so, I'm gonna be holding a webinar just for MPA members to go over some Q and A's and stuff like that to help you guys out. All right? Oh, I can see there's another Naveen 2 in here. <laughs> okay, so let's get started, let's get started. So, NFP. Okay. See you Okay, so I I took a trade on NFP with Euro New Zealand, uh, and I believe some of the members took it with me as well uh, in the elite community. And da, 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 here's a trade. Okay, we took it for a sell, took it for a 1.3 R on my end, uh, resulting in approximately uh, 620 euros uh, for this particular trade. Now the question was, uh, how do we come to this conclusion of what's going to happen in the NFP? So before we get into that, let's get, well, let's get in, you know, let's talk about the bare bones of, well, what is the NFP, right? So NFP stands for non-farm payroll, which means if you're not a farmer and you're working you're counted as employed. And if you're unemployed, you count in that number that, okay, this many people are unemployed. So this, this comes across the board uh, in the United States first Friday of every month. Okay, does that make sense? Everyone with me so far? Okay, so first Friday of every month at 8.30 a.m., this announcement uh, gets released saying that uh, um, how many people are unemployed and if the unemployment numbers are more extreme than the expected numbers, then uh, uh, the market goes chaos. It's one of the biggest news out there. Okay? No, I don't trade the, I don't trade the news, uh, Victor. Okay, I don't trade the news. Now, I'm, I'm going to explain to you why. I'm going to explain to you why. And if you've noticed, if you notice my trade here that I've taken, Notice my entry spot, okay? As much as I went for a precision entry, do you see how big my stop loss is? Yeah, that's the fear of the news because the news is crazy, you know? 
So it, I can't trade more professionally without uh, worrying about the news. Okay, so that's the difference when it, when it comes to trading. I saw an opportunity, I took it with no regards to, I don't care if there's a news or not, I don't care if there's elections, I don't care what's going on in the market. I see what I need to see to trade, I trade. Okay, because the chart shows human behavior and human behavior builds up over time. Okay, it's not just suddenly one behavior. Okay, now let me ask you guys one question here, okay? I tell every, everyone this about uh, the charts. When you see a chart, okay, anything that you see here, that's uh, all these candles here, what are these things? Okay, what are these things? When you see these things on the side? Yeah, good, Anthony. You can see that you guys are, uh, <laughs> you've been in my conferences before. Yeah, they're nothing but receipts. They're purchase receipts. They're, they're, they're receipts of what this person has been buying and selling, right? So if you think about it and you have all the receipts of an individual and you know that a person, he goes in, he buys a suit. Then he goes in, he buys fancy shoes. Then he goes in and he buys uh, a nice handkerchief. Then he goes in and he buys a nice hat. Can you tell if this person wants to buy, you know, sneakers? It's gonna be a less less chances, right? You start to know the habit of the person. That's what the market is. We're looking at the receipt of the previous time. You're looking at the receipt of the of the previous market, and you're saying, okay, let me see what's actually going on. Okay, can everyone still hear me? And is the audio and everything okay? Yeah, it's recorded as well. Um, remember one thing, guys. On the top right of this conference room, you'll see this icon here where it's green on my screen. If it's green, that means your internet connection is fantastic to me. If it's not green, that means uh, your connection is lagging. You need to log out and log back in. Okay? All right, so moving forward, moving forward. Yeah, uh, so the question came out is, do you do correlation during uh, the NFP? Of course, of course. Correlation is a must. Because would you guys all agree that NFP is one of the biggest news out there that comes out regularly? Yeah? So if NFP is the biggest news that comes out regularly, would we say there is big money playing on it? If there's big money playing on it and there is let's say let's say you're the trader and you got five billion dollars right now can you just take five billion dollars and hit sell or hit buy you're gonna have to inch your way into the market piece by piece by piece stacking up orders after orders after order this is visible to us okay this is visible to us and we can we can see it. there's a lot of paper bureaucracy if you want to call it you got to go through management and this and that because no one individual just comes in with five million dollars swinging you know, or five billion dollars of swinging there is a chain of command he needs to go through so paperwork gets done which also means he has information because information about what the NFP is gonna do before the NFP happens that's vital because his money is on the line okay so, if any of you guys having sound issues, increase your volume on your end. I think volume should be okay. I'm going to raise the mic a little bit more, but the volume seems to be fine for everyone. Yeah. Okay. So, I was doing I was doing a one-on-one -on -one with one of my students, uh, uh, Keith, and he, he pointed out to me that, hey man, uh, Naveen, I'm on this particular day, you know, without even talk, having discussions about uh, NFP and anything like that, we were looking at that as, um, you know, I see correlation coming in. Let me open up correlation charts here. Da, da, da. Here's a strength meter. What day was Friday? So it was 7th, 6th, uh, the 2nd of February, right? So we're looking at approximately, you see New Zealand has a plus five. Okay, everyone see the plus five on the New Zealand? Okay, now it's saying New Zealand has strength. 
Okay, it's saying New Zealand has strength across the board. Now I can do the research manually. I can go into each New Zealand chart and seeing is that really true? But this this chart is done by you know a colleague. It's in fact done by Armo. He's in the room right now, and he does this every single morning. And he goes in and he pulls out the numbers. Okay, he pulls out the numbers. He pulls on that why where is the money flow happening? Where is uh, where is the whole world putting their focus on? So we got the numbers from Armo in the morning. Then the stat, uh, one of my students was like, well, Naveen, if uh, uh, New Zealand is strong, this means this chart is going to go down. Does everyone agree? Does everyone understand why this chart needs to go down if New Zealand is strong? Okay, so what we did was, we first thing we did was we opened up the New Zealand group. Okay, I'm, I'm walking you through the entire process of what got us to this situation. So it's it's almost like I'm walking you through a trade. Okay, is that okay for you guys? I, I think a lot of you guys are MPA students, so you guys probably want to see this. Uh, okay, and those of you who are in the four course bundle, this will help you even more because this will raise the bar a lot for you guys. Okay, so we got New Zealand, here we go, across the board. Okay, across the board, we got New Zealand strength coming in here. We got New Zealand strength coming in here. We got New Zealand strength here, but slowing down. Okay, we got New Zealand strength here. Here, it's going downwards because New Zealand's on the right side, not on the left. It's a counter pair here. So the chart needs to go down for strength. Okay, here as well. It's on the right side, so the chart needs to go down, so sell. And then, here we go again, New Aussie New Zealand. New Zealand needs to be going on the downside, so sell. Okay. Everything, everyone with me so far? Okay, now I'm going to ask you the, th the thing where we say, we go into, after this mode, what we do is window shopping. Okay, what's window shopping? What, what does window shopping mean to you guys? What's window shopping? If you have to buy shoes, for example, are you just going to go into a store, look at a shoes and just buy it? Yeah, you're going to compare the pairs, look for the best price, have a view first. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what's happening in this chart. When we, we know all the New Zealands are moving, now our, our whole question is, what do I do now? <laughs> That's my wife's job. <laughs> okay, so we... We know that all the New Zealands are moving. We we gotta think, um, you know, well, which one is the best one? So let's let's look at that. Let's look at that together. Take a look at New Zealand USD. New Zealand USD has been inching up higher, 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 and higher. Look at on early December. You see early December, this little high here. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing in early December. This that same high around here. I'm going to do the same thing in early December, the same high around here. Now I want you to tell me something. Is New Zealand USD higher than the circle I drew? Okay. New Zealand CAD, is it higher than the circle I drew? Okay. Is New Zealand Yen higher than the circle I drew? Okay. Without even going further, can you not know which one are better odds for you to make profit on? Which ones are the better prices for shoes and stuff like that? So when you just compare these three, so so what what uh, one of my students did was he's like, I like the way New Zealand USD looks. New Zealand is strong. It's doing a nice pullback. I want to prepare to buy this thing. I I want to buy it and I want to milk it. Okay, it's a good outlook. You know, I, I like it when my students talk aggressive like that like I want to go in I want to make money okay they come in with a plan they come in with a trade they come up with solutions and they come up with if then and else which is the best thing I see from students it's like I'm fully prepared let's see how this rolls okay let's do the same thing early December for this one okay well, how would you say the market was here is it lower Okay, no, barely, okay, 
What about pound New Zealand early December? Okay, that looks good, right? What about Aussie New Zealand early December? Okay, uh, what, the reason why I'm saying December is because visually that's the reference point we can see that markets are trying to make higher highs from the recent support resistance in the overall long run, right? Okay, does that make sense? Okay, and we can say why not November? It's because we didn't see, if I, if I say the markets were going lower low sequences. Does it have to break November to say it's finally an up or does it have to beat December? We've got to beat the most recent thing, right? And the most recent thing is actually December. Right. So you got to take it, take it like that. Um, you, you can't suddenly choose something further. Uh, so we're using it like that. OK, so when we look at it, things like that, we're looking at the situations like, OK, so we want to buy this stuff. Oh, sorry. We want to buy the stuff. So one student is looking at this. Uh, bum, bum, bum. And then we notice that, oh, well, there is a range kicking in here. Correct? Uh, JJJ, everything is recorded here. Don't worry. Um, it's recorded in-house and in the conference room. So uh, there is going to be no breach of recording. We'll, we'll get it out to you ASAP. Don't worry. Okay, things are turning into a range here. New Zealand CAD also looks good. This one, also rangy looking, right? Okay, now what about Euro New Zealand? At that time, is that a range or is that a downtrend? Yeah, downtrend. Okay, what about pound New Zealand? Is that a range or a downtrend? Downtrend, right? Now, if you compare all the charts to the circle ones, which one actually catches your eye the most? The absolute most. What's, what's the highest number on your um, window shopping list? Pound New Zealand, Euro New Zealand, New Zealand USD. Okay, these three are sticking out. Okay, Euro New Zealand barely made lower lows, but it has a downtrend, which means sellers are still in control. New Zealand USD uptrend and a higher high, but in a range, which means parallel fight. New Pound New Zealand, a lower low from the circle and in a trend, which means this is even powerful as well. Do you notice the reactions followed by all of the stuff? Look at the reaction, how New Zealand CAD moved. Look at how New Zealand USD moved. Look at how New Zealand Yen moved. Look at how Pound New Zealand is moving. Look at how Euro New Zealand is moving. Okay, are you starting to notice a pattern how for them to move you know, the window shopping actually helps out because all you have to do apart from the research is take a step back and be like, I know I have to trade something with New Zealand, but which one, which one looks better visually, which one looks better technically. Make sense. Okay. So, uh, for those of you who are who are confused, don't worry. You guys can rewatch the recording. It's gonna it's gonna help you out. Uh, it's gonna be available also on urbanforex.com. So don't worry about that. You guys can rewatch it um, to, until it un, until it makes sense for you guys. All we're doing is we know we need to trade something New Zealand, but which one and why? Okay. All right. Now that we know that information, we went into. Uh, I looked at this on, on Euro New Zealand. I'm explain my trade to you first, and then I'm going to explain to you pound New Zealand, and then I'm going to also explain to you New Zealand USD. Okay. Now, 
So the ones that we like are these three, New Zealand USD, Euro New Zealand, Pound, uh, Pound New Zealand, okay? The reason why we don't like Aussie New Zealand, here's the circle, look how high price goes. We don't like that. Where's my lower low or a struggle to make a lower low? That, that doesn't look so good. Out, okay? We don't wanna be messing with something that already gives us trouble. If we have choices, why pick the worst one? It just doesn't make any sense, right? It's like saying I want to buy a house, but let me buy the worst house ever. No, no one does that. Okay, let me do it here, New Zealand Yen. We don't like this one as well. We're going to put that out. Okay, we're going to avoid the distraction. So I'm going to empty these charts out. Okay, New Zealand CAD. We can discuss this later as well. I'm going to bring this out for now. Okay, so far so good. Everyone see those three charts now? We'll go with them one by one, piece by piece. Okay, we're gonna go into Euro New Zealand. That's the trade I took. Okay, it's not the only answer. There's multiple trades you can take. I just happen to be on this one. Some others can trade the other ones. It's perfectly fine. Does that make sense? You don't have to do the exact same thing I do and saying, well, if Naveen does it, that must be the right one. I must be on the wrong one. No, don't think of it like that. There are multiple options. I'm just showing you how to window shop. The, the goal is to get the shoe, right? <laughs> okay, so when we're looking at this on Euro New Zealand, we see this as, okay, well, it's trying to make a lower low, but it's at least it's in a downtrend. And if you guys are MPA students, can you tell me if this down was real or if it's much higher? Where is this circle actually supposed to be? Yeah, it's fake. Take a look at this. Since this low, prices never went lower. It, all of this is fake. So the circle actually is something like that. So prices are actually in a downtrend. Yeah, if it's in a downtrend, this goes overlooked by people, helps people thinking, oh, that's a double bottom, it's gonna buy. Right, because that's what all the internet education says. A double bottom means market reversal. Keep buying it. Okay, good. Keep buying it. I need buyers so I can sell. I need buyers. Okay, so now here we, here we go. Coming from this area, and if we need, if I'm looking at this as support equals resistance right here, and the prices are coming up, I'm going to go into the four hours now. We're going to step in to look at some precision. Okay, I'm going to step in to look at some precision. Here comes the markets coming up full throttle. I'm looking at this area as support equals resistance from the daily and the markets are coming up full throttle. Everyone see all these green bars coming up? Let's cover them up. Da, da, da. Where is my box? There we go. I'm going to try to make it nice and easy for you guys so you guys can see it. So you guys have a... Oh, actually... Okay. All right, here we go. I'm gonna take a screenshot and I'm gonna start drawing it on uh, on the screenshot for you guys. Okay, um, I'm gonna draw a circle. Let me know when you guys can see it. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, Bernard uh, Boschut, uh, yeah, we need those 95 percenters. Um, yeah, it's. This, this game is a battle of who knows and who doesn't know. That's all it is. Because people get stubborn in what they know and they, they cannot look at the other option. All right? Now, now, you guys want an example? Like, how many of you guys here are, are going to say, okay, I understand people are stubborn, but I'm not stubborn. How many of you guys here can say I'm not stubborn or I don't think that happens to me? Okay. You know, everyone's stubborn sometimes, right? Here, here's the next thing I'm gonna to explain to you. Here's the next thing I'm gonna to explain to you. Hey, if I was to tell you that all of this setup and everything, you're looking to do a buy right here. If you're in a buy trade, once the trade is active, do you even notice a sell coming or is everything you're thinking related to a buy? Any pullback comes in, oh, okay, okay, it's a better price. It's going to buy from here because it's support equals resistance. It's holding, holding, oh, that's good. It's pacing because it's getting ready to buy. 
the brain becomes stubborn for you. It takes over and you cannot see the other side because you want the buy to work so badly. Okay? So even if it's not intentional of being stubborn, your brain will get hijacked. Okay? That's how it works because you're not you're unable to see the market in a fluid state of mind. And uh, man, I used to suffer with that so much. Uh, you know, when I started off trading, like I thought I was right. I had all this knowledge, and I was like, well, I've studied so much. Why isn't my trade working? It should work. And that should is the is the wrong attitude. Okay. So okay. So now we see the buyers coming up, right? With this circle that I'm drawing, the, the buyers are coming at full fledged. Okay. How do we know this is the buyers coming up? Is this the buyer? Why why is this the buyer? Okay, so think about it this way. Think about it this way. Remember how I always take you guys tell you guys one thing, anticipate, don't participate. So, who does the anticipation? The 5% or the 95%? 5%. Who does the participate stuff? Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to walk you through very slowly. Here's the market going down. Down, pull back, down, pull back, down, pull back, down. What do you think people are people are doing? Selling. Yeah. If it goes up like this, what do you think people want to do? No, they're still wanting to sell because the design for them looks down. But here's the problem that comes in is they only turn buyers once they see something so dramatic, so emotional that they're like, oh my God, it's a buy. This is the moment when the dramatic stuff happens. It's like, ah, here comes the buyers because there's no buyers down here. That's for sure. All the 95% buyers are up here because they just had their, oh my God, did you see that uptrend that caused by Trump or whatever? You know? So it, it, it shocks people like, oh my God, it's going up. And if I don't react now, I'm going to miss an opportunity, you know? And this comes in from people's background. Some people feel like, They've missed loved ones. They, they feel they've missed opportunities and chances to make it in life. So they feel they need to jump on every opportunity. Okay. And there's no control over it. Okay. Yeah. FOMO. Fear of missing out. You know, everyone else is making money. Why not me? I need to get in on, I need to get in on this. If it's not now, it's never. It's kind of that mentality, right? So they start jumping in, in the buys here. That to me is like, I know I'm a seller. Here comes the buyers. And that's fantastic. I need buyers. They come up to this area of support equals resistance and the buyers come up here and they start fighting it. They come down a bit. They go up a bit. They come down a bit. They go up a bit. Come down a bit. Go up a bit. Come down a bit. Now, why in, in the right mind would I want to sell at this point? Because if the market is going up and it's pulling back slowly, doesn't it actually mean the markets are preparing to buy again? So why am I selling? Where is the idea of sell coming from? Let's see. Let's wait for it. Let's wait for it. Where is the answer? I'm waiting for seller's territory, seller's territory. Okay, the big boys, okay, seller territory, big boys, same thing. I'm waiting for the answer. Keep going. Correlation, there we go, David Abel. There we go. Because New Zealand is weak across the board. That is not just, uh, sorry, New Zealand is strong across the board. That's not just a big boy. That's the biggest boy. You do not challenge the biggest boy in the jungle. It's like saying I fight gorillas for a living and then uh, now I'm going to go go after the tiger. Like you don't do that. Okay? There's only so long you can test out your luck and survive. Okay. So, now think of it this way. Now, why does this become a fantastic opportunity to sell? 
because according to design, according to design, the design says it's still a buy, right? But who sells at this point? Apart from me and some of the students, who sells at this time? Only the 5%, only the 5%. Now, what happens once the sell happens? Everyone's sell comes in later. Yeah, that's when they start participating. Now, here's the most interesting part for me. As I'm looking at this for a sell and I see this rollover happen in the market and this consolidation holding, 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 this consolidation makes people look at this as support equals resistance and they want to buy. Now, why do they want to buy? Remember that stubbornness I talked about earlier? Because they're in a buy. They can't see it any other way. They're going to start adding buy positions. If they got stopped out, they're going to enter with a bigger position for a buy because they believe in this buy so much that it better work. And what is this what is this area called when they're looking to buy and the big boys are looking to sell? That's the money spot. That's the spot where money is made. Because that's the spot where the people who know versus the people who don't know uh, that's where the battle happens. Okay? Does that make sense so far? Okay, I know I know it's a lot to take in. I know it's a lot to take in, but I know a lot of you guys are already students are starting to understand this. Some of you guys not might not even be my students yet, and you're starting to get the grasp of okay, I see it, like you know, I see why this is happening. And the I, I know it's also easy when I explain I get this a lot, you know, it seems so simple when you when you teach it. And that's the reason why I, I don't want to teach it in hindsight. I don't want to just teach it for the sake of, oh, you see, that happened yesterday and I did that. No, I, I'm also showing you I got in, that's my trading statement, and that's the money I made. And I do this time and time again for all my students. You know, let's put our money where our mouth is. I mean, otherwise, what's the point, right? So I'm trying to show you guys that there is a different way to look at the markets. And I think that's the only way to look at the markets. It, it is different from the way the average person thinks. Okay. Uh, Kev, uh, Naveen, how do we know uh, that it's not going to reverse after that area in the circle? Now, uh, this area in the circle here. And you're saying, how do we know if it's not going to sell, you mean? Or if it's not going to reverse for a buy? Ah, reverse for a buy, you mean? Okay. Now, can it reverse for a buy? Okay. Here's okay. I'm I'm gonna give you a million dollar answer. Okay. This answer I'm about to give you is alone worth a lot of money. And and I want you guys to I know. Because it's free, most people don't take it for, you know, they take it for granted. I want you to take this moment and really take it in. What I'm about to tell you is the real money maker. Okay? Ready? If I want to sell, if I want to sell, what do I need? I need buyers. If I look at this chart right here and I say, is that enough buyers? I need to make that decision of, I think we got enough suckers in there. Let's do the sell. If there's not enough buyers, what's going to happen is in this area, we're going to have a spike. Which means it, it's going to look like it's going a higher high. And what happens when the price breaches slightly above this price? What happens? Hello, participants. Everybody starts jumping in on the buy. Now we have more buyers. And once that faker comes back in, we're like, game time. Okay? Again, it's a very big information I'm sharing with you guys very openly today. Do not take it lightly. Okay? I'm going to show you this on the next trade. Ready? 
Okay, let's go into uh, the next pair. The other pairs that that we're setting up uh, for that time. Do you, do you notice, because, now, can I ask you guys one question? Now, the NFP is for what country? It's for the US. Now, I'm trading Euro New Zealand. Why? Because that's I'm just following money. I don't care what the news is trying to say. When at what point in anyone's life has the news actually ever helped anyone except make them feel fearful, angry, sorry, upset, pitiful? News is just there to spark emotion. It doesn't do anything for anyone. Right? All you can do is feel sorry for people, get angry at people, hate people. Uh, you know, these are only the options that a news can provide for you. It's just emotion run. Uh, confusion also, yeah. So, at least for trading, uh, if you were to take my, you know, my personal opinion on it, is leave the news out of it when it comes to trading. Personal life, it's, it's okay. But when it comes to trading, leave it out. Leave it out. Okay, now let's take a look at... Uh, Pound New Zealand, okay? We're gonna start with the daily time frame. Okay, here we go. So you see this line that we've drawn? Do you, does everyone understand why that line is there? Okay, it's like a support resistance area, right? Okay, now I'm gonna go into the four hours and then I'll take a screenshot and we'll start discussing that one. Hello, hello, hi Mike. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. This is fun. Okay, why is this fun? Okay, here's a screenshot. And let me know when you guys are going to see the circle. I haven't drawn it yet. One second. Um, and here it is. You guys see it? Fantastic, fantastic. Okay. Okay, now that we see that circle, now we're going to discuss this. Sellers market. New Zealand is strong. I want to sell. Okay, I want to sell. For me to sell, what do I need? Yeah, buyers. Until I don't get buyers, I sit on my hands. I stay put. Okay? I stay put. Sellers, participants, participants, participants. Aha. That going above the recent support equals resistance is going to grab people's eye, right? That will grab their attention. Okay, first things first, you need to keep an open eye view, which means keep an open view of what is happening. What just happened here from this lowest point until that lowest point? What, what is all this down here? If I go up to the daily, what do you see there? Yeah, it's a gap. It's a fake. It's just, it shot down and then it shot right back up. Hmm. Interesting. You know, it's something we discussed in the last part of the course, right? Shot back down, shot right back up, and we, and we extended out further and further and further and further and further and further and further. Supply and demand traders are looking at this like, oh my God, look at that buy. I could have made so much money. Yeah, in the wrong direction. You're just waiting to get killed, crucified. Right? I could have made so much money. Yeah, but you know, if I just enter here and exit here, yeah, that's a lot of money. Okay, that's not trading. You're just hitting stuff and, and, and you're, you're just looking for, you know, odds to pull you through. You can do that. Okay, here's the thing. Here comes buyers. Okay, I'm going to change the colors now so you guys can follow. I'm going to dry it in blue. Buyers coming in hot. Pulling back. Holding above. Buyers coming in hot again. Okay, pulling back. Once they come down to here, what happens? Buyers right jump right back up. Okay, higher high sequences so far. Okay, approaching our support equals resistance, major support resistance, the big boy support resistance. Okay, once it's getting higher high again. We got a, would we say that's a higher high right now? Okay. 
and then he goes up again, would you say that's a higher high? No, and then boom. So whoever was participant in the buying sequence now is like, what in the world is happening? Right? They're like, what in the world? It was going up. Why is it not going up anymore? Right? That, that, that's, the, that's the mentality. Okay. Now, for them to participate, the market goes up again here. They're still thinking buys. And then it collapses on them really, really hard down to here. Now, this is the moment to look at it of, okay. I'm going to show you something very interesting here. For the bigger picture coming in from the daily, coming in from the daily, how fast did this buy come up versus the down? How many candles do you think the uptrend has versus the downtrend? Is it more candles in the uptrend? Yeah, much slower, right? You have to believe in I don't know if there's enough suckers in there yet. Now, if there's not enough suckers in there and you participate in this sell because you're like, well, the pattern says sell without knowing that there is a faker here, price is afraid of this price. I mean, markets are afraid of this price without knowing there's no, not really buyers in here. That million dollar thing I was showing you guys earlier. And if you put your stop losses right above the recent high, Look what happens. Now, if you look at it this way, when you see these green bars coming up at full, full speed, and full speed also activates a brand new high almost, trying to break above the highs, what do you think is happening to the emotions of people? I knew it was my buy. I knew it because they were trying to buy it earlier. I knew it was my buy. And that to us is the same thing. Our faces look the same way because we know what's happening. We look just like that. Only difference is, you know, we're in a different direction and we're just as excited because this is where all the trading happens. Okay, Dr. Seuss, it looks like, yeah, the, the Grinch that stole Christmas, right? Like, <laughs> okay, so, and that's when the sell happens. Now, why does this sell perform so smoothly and so nicely? Because it's a nice downtrend. Because the, the circle that we drew on the daily chart is right there. Look how much lower we are in the market compared to everything else. It's much more aggressive, right? Okay. And, but because it was seller's market and everything was good, did, did the sellers just give you the money very easily or did they come after you? Remember, if you want to play the game on the big boy's table, you need to step up your knowledge a bit. You need to keep your, you need to keep your mind open that... There's going to be more. There's going to be more to this. Wait for it. Wait for it. If you jump the gun, then even with your knowledge, you're going to get stopped out. Okay. Everyone with me so far? Does that, is this starting to make sense of how... I, I don't want to say the word trickery is happening because it's how, how the industry is run. And in fact, it's how the whole world works. It's knowledge versus non-knowledge. Right? This is why people go to university. They want to get that upper knowledge above the rest. This is why they, they go continuing education. This is why a doctor gets paid more to, to cut something in your stomach when everyone's like, I can just take a knife and cut as well. Yeah, but where do you cut makes the money? Right? Everyone can take a knife and slice you open, but where to do it without killing the person? Okay? Um, 
BZ Kalas, but Naveen, you said do not need to look at the data far back on the daily. No, we're not looking at the data far back on the daily. I'm going to show you something really cool. Ready? Okay, I, I noticed there's a problem uh, for some students like this. I'm going to show you something really cool. Here we go. We're here on the daily. Okay, I'm going to do a screenshot. Okay, so this right here is the recent market. We we don't. Okay, oh, I, sorry. I should make it bigger for you guys to see. Okay. Okay. Is the chart much uh, bigger now to see? Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna cut off the last bits because we don't we don't really need to see that. That's the recent market. So up until the recent market, I want you guys to see one thing. Okay. Now, when you're looking at all the situation here and you're like, okay, I, I know it's seller's territory, right? Coming in. Okay. Seller, seller, seller's coming in. Now, why does this thing have up, down, up, down, up, down here? Why does it have so much up and downs in here? This is, this trade is actually a weekly daily trade. Okay. Cause we have a two time frame rule, right? Okay, weekly is saying everything below here is seller's territory. Then we come down to the daily and say, okay, give me buyers and I'll, I'll look into selling it. But give me buyers. Give me something aggressive, right? Okay, so when we're looking at all these scenarios, I want you to always watch what is the point where I start to notice a break in pattern. Okay, so I'm going to start covering all this here as well. Okay, here we go. If we start, uh, if we start from here, okay, when sorry, if we start from there, okay, is that a lower low from anything? No, so there's nothing there to draw. It's not a lower low. It's a faker. It just, it popped below this, but it popped right back up. It's not real. Okay, is this a higher high? No, it's the same thing. It's popping below and popping above. When we go through all the sequences, you come out to the situation like, okay, well, what is real then? And what is not real? And you end up with the situation that we're at seller's territory. See, you start with looking at the most recent data, that you can see, but if there's nothing to draw or to understand, you keep moving back until you find the most recent thing that sticks out. Okay, we're not just simply saying take this much data or take that much data. It's not a fixed science like that. You have to look at what's the most recent transaction that this individual has done, which we can judge him on. Right? We want to know what he's doing. What's his behavior? What is out of the ordinary that the person does that we say, aha, I know what he's going to do next. I can follow his pattern of what he's buying and I know his buying behavior. All right. It's like, how many of you guys have children? Yeah, a lot of you guys have children, right? And if you, if you're looking, you know, if they have credit cards and stuff and you go through their credit card statements, if you see, you know, Starbucks, 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 Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut, Pizza Hut. And then suddenly you see a hotel room in there, you know, in California somewhere. And you guys don't even live in California. Aren't you going to be like, wait, this is weird. It doesn't match the pattern. Right? It's out of the ordinary, which means it could be a faker. It could be a faker. That's not his normal way of behaving. It could be not him. Okay. Does that make sense? <laughs> Leticia, no kids until I master Forex. <laughs> I think I'm just gonna not have kids ever. Like, if I want to continue trading, I already get white hair from trading. Uh, I look at all you guys as my kids, you know. Like, <laughs> we, we've been talking about that in, the, in 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 house today with the Forex watchers teammates and stuff like that. That you know, some of our uh, mentors are almost burning out. At, 
How many of you guys here have dealt with Armo already uh, in the Mastering Price Action course? Yeah, you know, you, you know, let's let's take a moment and tell him thank you for all the hard work he does because he sits there answering the same redundant questions day in and day out without ever asking for anything in return. He's there day in and day out to help you guys, make you have a breakthrough. But if you take a look at it from his side of things, it must drive him nuts, right? It takes a lot of patience to be a mentor and a trader at the same time. You know, so, you know, I, as much as we appreciate students, you know, students should also take it like, you know, we got a lot on our plate too, uh, but we're here for you guys and, you know, uh, we want to help as much as we can. And that's, that's why we're here, right? How many of you guys have, are having breakthroughs, back-to-back -back breakthroughs? Like everything you've been watching from us, everything you've been learning from us, it's like, Aha, after aha, after aha. Okay, I'm going to ask the difficult question now. Ready? How many of you guys have graduated from the course and are actually doing one of two things? They, you guys have stopped the bleeding and have started to turn profits. Be honest. Be honest. If you're not turning profitable, tell me no. But if you stop the bleeding and starting to turn profit, be honest. Just tell me. And not finished yet. Okay, two days. Oh, for those of you who do not have the do not have the course, you can actually get into the mastering uh, price section. I think Armo will share the link for you guys. Um, okay, and those of you who are who are still probably bleeding, try to still go through the course without, uh, you know, without coming with prejudice. Keep an open mind. Keep an open mind because what I'm teaching you guys here sounds controversial to the average individual, right? Like if, if, if I was to talk about this in a normal uh, forum, everyone's going to be like, what's wrong with this guy? Everything looks like a sell. Why does he want to do a buy? And then when the buy happens, it's like, oh, well, he got lucky. <laughs> right? So, so one thing I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you guys to do is stop playing with the herd start hanging out with people at your level now you guys are different you guys are above the rest and take pride in that don't feel like oh I, I, i'm not gonna feel boastful yeah feel proud be overconfident that's okay you guys are above the rest now that's perfectly fine okay it's not hard it's easy exactly peter Okay, we, we talk about that in the course. Just keep repeating that. Don't let it be daunting. Don't let all the people with the jargons on CNBC scare you from this industry. It's a beautiful industry. It makes fantastic money. Uh, everything's beautiful. Any of you guys actually in Maldives right now? I'll be there tomorrow. Uh, from tomorrow until the 11th, I'm going to be in Maldives. Okay. So if anyone, you guys, any of you guys are there, drop me a message. Uh, how do we get the strength meter chart? Uh, when are you in London? Uh, London, I, I should be there this year. I was just waiting for uh, <laughs> the, the the winter to slow down and I'll come. I'll come. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, Cape Town's on the list. Uh, there, there's a lot of places I, I'm going to visit. I'm going to start actually holding physical seminars as well. And hopefully you guys can come attend those seminars. I'm going to start doing them across the world. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe it'll be nice to see you guys in person uh, and stuff like that. So I'm actually already in Bangkok. I'm Bangkok and I'm in Bangkok right now. Okay, I'm in Bangkok right now. So, okay, so elite community. For those of you who are asking about the elite community, the place where we do all of our trades and I post my trade, my own trades and my statements and stuff like that. Uh, the elite community is only accessible once you get actually we, we've given an offer basically if you actually get in on the four course bundle you can actually have a a sneak preview um of uh the elite uh, the elite community for a month uh, for free at no cost so how many of you guys are actually in the elite community okay now 
one thing in the elite community, guys. Um, we're gonna be we're gonna also be changing some rules about this in a bit. I want you guys to understand one thing. You guys are watching lions in the jungle. You guys are watching them hunt. Don't interfere with the hunting. They will bite back. These guys are senior traders. You need to treat them as they're doing so much that they can already do their, their hunting. If you interrupt their hunting by asking them, well, what do you think about that deer? What do you think about that gazelle? What do you think about this animal? The lion's going to be like, hey, I'm hunting. My focus is on this piece only. Do not distract me. So we're going to change stuff around a little bit in the lead community because they're getting thrown around all over the place. Right, and we don't. The last thing we want to do is burn them out. Okay? We don't want to burn them out by overwhelming questions and this and that. When you guys come in, just watch. A lion never replies back, does he? But yet we know everything about the lion. You have to watch it from a distance and learn from by the behavior of how they're trading. Okay, if you keep poking at them, they kind of bite back. You got to be careful. Okay. So all in all, everyone is still very, very helpful. Everyone's still quite good. Uh, so yeah, this is the place where we do where we do trades. Um, some of my recent trades are here as well. Uh, and all of my webinars, I show you a trade. Every time I do a trade, it's in there. So again, if you guys, uh, for those of you who do not have the Mastering Price Action course, get it now. It's for $197. Um, it's, we're still keeping it at that rate for now. Get it while the price is still last and get it while our Mo is still sane and willing to help you guys day after day after day. If he loses his mind, that's on you guys. But while he's still willing to answer the same question over and over and over and over again, uh, <laughs> uh, can you show us the four course bundle and motivation course? It's actually inside the Mastering Price Section course. You cannot access it outside of it. Okay, it's on week five, I believe, uh, the four course bundle. Okay. So, uh, again, it, time is up, guys, now. And thank you all for coming. Uh, if you do not have the MPA course, get it. And we will meet you guys until next time. We'll see you guys in two weeks. Thanks, guys. Everything was recorded. I will get it to you guys very soon. Cheers.